Hello, and welcome to Chapter 11, Assignment Number 1. Our learning target is, I will be able to find the area of rectangles, squares, parallelograms, and triangles. Remember, while you are watching this video, you need to be an active participant. So get out your notebook or get a piece of paper and pause the video whenever you need more time. So let's get started. I'm going to begin with a rectangle. The area formula for a rectangle is base times height. So I have a rectangle drawn on my screen. I have the bottom part of my rectangle, that bottom side is colored blue and I'm going to name that my base in this case. Now, the question you need to ask is when you have your base, you need to find out which, um, is, which length is going to be your height. And the height needs to be a perpendicular distance. And we know that a rectangle, all four of our angles are right angles. So I can name this side here that I have colored in green the height because it is perpendicular to that bottom blue base. So my area formula for my rectangle is the length of this blue base times the height. Now let's look at a square. And a square is actually a special rectangle. So we also have the area formula as base times height. So I have my blue base again, my green height, and my area formula for a square is base times height. Now with a square, we know that all of the sides are the same length. So the other thing you could do, because all of my sides are the same, my base is actually equal to the length of that height. I also could say that the area of a square is side squared. So now let's look at a parallelogram. With a parallelogram, our area formula is also base times height. So I have a parallelogram drawn on my screen with a blue base for the bottom side of my parallelogram. But now my height is not a side of my parallelogram because my parallelogram does not have right angles like my rectangle did and my square. This time with the parallelogram, my height is on the inside of my parallelogram in this case, but it is still the perpendicular distance between my two parallel sides. So my green height is this portion right here that goes from the top of my parallelogram and goes perpendicular down to that blue base at the bottom. Let me do a quick demonstration for you to show you why the parallelogram formula is the same as that of the rectangle, why it, why it is base times height. So I am going to take this little triangle where the height kind of um, separates my parallelogram. And I'm if I take this little triangle and I slide it over to the other side of my parallelogram so that my slanted sides meet up. You notice I have exactly the same rectangle as what I had right above that for the rectangle. And that is why my parallelogram formula is the length of the base times the height because now my parallelogram actually looks like a rectangle. I could also move this little triangle portion back over to the left-hand side where it was before, and you can see that it is a parallelogram. So the formula is still base times height. So moving on, let's do our last polygon, and let's find the area of a triangle. So I have a triangle that I've drawn on my screen. I have the bottom of the triangle I'm going to label as my base. So my the bottom part, side of my triangle is blue. And now my height of this triangle 
is still the perpendicular distance, um, but now it goes from the vertex that is opposite my base, and it is the length, that perpendicular length, from the vertex down to my base, my blue base at the bottom. So I'm going to do a little demonstration here so that we can figure out how to find the area of a triangle. So I am going to take a copy and duplicate this triangle. So now I have two triangles side by side. I'm going to flip that copied one upside down and I'm going to slide it over so that it meets up with the original triangle. And now let's see what we have. I'm going to highlight what I just did. I doubled that triangle, flipped it upside down, and I now have highlighted in yellow all the way around. And what do we have? We actually have a parallelogram. And we saw on the last slide that the area formula for a parallelogram is base times height. Now, in order to figure out the formula for a triangle, we actually have doubled the triangle. We duplicated that and put it side by side. Let me take, let me find my highlighter, and let's highlight our original triangle in blue. And I'm going to color it in. So I now have my original triangle is highlighted blue, and that is half of the area of this parallelogram. Because I duplicated my triangle, I flipped it upside down, I put it right next to the original triangle, and so my triangle formula is the area equals the base times this perpendicular height, but I need to divide it by two. You can also think of the triangle formula as one half times the base times the height. So hopefully this visually will help you see why the formula for a triangle is base times height divided by two. So let's do a quick review of all of the area formulas that we've learned in this video today before we go on to doing a few examples together. So I have an organizer, and in my first column I'm going to have the name of the polygon. In my second column I'm going to actually have the formula for that polygon, and then we have our diagram. So if you have not taken notes yet, now is the time that you would want to be writing these down, and feel free to pause this video at any time. I'm going to go through all of these. So the first one we looked at was rectangle. The area equals base times the height. So I have drawn a rectangle. I've labeled my base. I've labeled my height. And remembering that the height is always the perpendicular distance. Second, we have a square. The area was also base times height. And I drew a square showing that all four sides are the same, but we still can consider that base times height, even though those two lengths are going to be equal. Moving on, we have a parallelogram, which also has the area formula of base times height. I have drawn a parallelogram over in my third column, um, remembering that the height is the perpendicular distance, and here I have the height inside of the parallelogram, I also could have put that height on the outside. And finally, I have the area formulas for a triangle. Area formula is base times height divided by 2. Now I would like you to notice in my um, diagram, my third column, where I have my triangle drawn, I actually have four different cases. The first case I have shown that I have an acute triangle, and you can see the base times the height and how that perpendicular distance comes down. The second case I have is a right triangle, and notice with the right triangle, because I have 
that right angle, my base and my height are actually the two sides of my right triangle, the two legs. My third case, I also, it looks like I have another right triangle, but now they're going to be using uh, the hypotenuse as the base. So now my height is on the inside of that right triangle. It still is the perpendicular distance that connects the vertex that is opposite the base and goes perpendicular down to the base. And then my fourth triangle is actually an obtuse triangle. And notice if I'm going to have the base, which is um, one of the legs of my right, or sorry, of my obtuse angle, that my height is actually going to be on the outside of that triangle. So take a minute to pause this and to draw all of those diagrams. And then on the next slide, we will start our examples. All right, so here is our first example. When we're working through area problems, you should always ask yourself two questions before you start. Number one, what type of polygon do we have? And number two, what formula do we use for that polygon? So in this first example, it is asking us to find the area of parallelogram PQRS. So there is a parallelogram that we have shaded in blue. And actually you see that example number one, I have part A and part B, and they are using the exact same parallelogram. So I've, I just have the same parallelogram duplicated in both examples. Um, it is a longer, skinnier uh, parallelogram that is kind of sitting on its side. So the shorter side of the parallelogram is labeled as six units, and then the longer of the parallelogram um, side is labeled as 12 units. So let's look at this. Um, I like this example because it is asking us to use um, different bases for our, um, to find the area. So the first example, part A, is asking us to use PS as the base. So PS I'm going to highlight in blue because they're asking us to use that as our base. And the um, PS base is the um, side that is six units. So we know that our area formula for a parallelogram is base times height. So the question you need to ask is, if six is the length of my base, what height do we use in this case? So if you would like to pause the video here and try to work this example yourself before you watch me work through the solution, go ahead. This would be a good time to pause. So if you are coming back from pausing the video, if PS is my base, I would have RU as my height because I need to have the perpendicular distance between my two parallel sides. So if PS is 6, then I also know QR at the top of my parallelogram is also 6. And that perpendicular height actually is on the outside of this parallelogram, and that is length 8. So let me get my pen out, and let's work through this. All right, so I have my area equals, and my base times my height. My base is 6 units, and my height is 8 units. So I need to take 6 times 8, I would get 48. And because they don't give me any units to use, I'm going to use units squared. And you can either write out units squared, or you can use u squared. 
Now let's do part B. We have the exact same parallelogram, but this time they're asking us to use PQ as the base. So I'm going to highlight side PQ, which is a length of 12. And now we still have our area formula as base times height. If I'm using 12 as my base, what height do I use? Again, I need the perpendicular height, the perpendicular distance between these two bases. So I can see that this 4 that's on the inside of my parallelogram is going to be my height. So let's figure out what the area is. My area equals, and this time my base is going to be 12, and my height is 4. 12 times 4 is 48, and I again have units squared. So notice that my area is the same, and it should be because I have the same parallelogram in both cases. So 48 units squared, and it just depends on which base you're using as to which height. All right, let's move on to the next set of examples. Now would be a good time for you to pause the video and try these on your own before you watch me work them. So in the first diagram, we have a square with a side length of 15. So we know that the area formula for a square is base times height. And because both of these, the base and the height are both 15, we can, work through our problem. Let me get my pen. Area equals the base is 15 and so is the height. So get your calculators out. We have 15 times 15 or side squared which is 225 and because they did not give us any units we will just write units squared or just u squared. The second diagram on this slide is a triangle. We know that the formula for the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. So we need to figure out which is the base and which is the height. Well, I have my base is 12. That is the bottom of this triangle. And then the perpendicular distance from the vertex that's opposite that base is my 10, so this green height. So let's work this problem. So I have area equals my base, which is 12, my height is 10, oops, divided by 2, and we know that the area then is 12 times 10, which is 120, divided by 2 is 60. Whoops. <laughs> Let me start this. It's not very easy using a pen on this. So let's try this again. 60 units squared. Now, you could either have done 12 times 10 divided by 2. You could also have done 12 divided by 2 first to get 6. And 6 times 10 would also give you 60. Or we could have done 10 divided by 2 is 5. So 12 times 5 is also 60. So you have a choice as to how you want to do your multiplication if you're using a calculator. You can just do 12 times 10 divided by 2. Here's our final example. In this example, we have an obtuse triangle where the shortest side is labeled as 4. That is at the bottom of the triangle. The longest side is 7. And then they have a height, which is on the outside of the triangle, that is labeled as x. They tell us the triangle has an area of 10 centimeters squared and they're asking us to determine the length of the height. So now is a good time for you to pause the video and try this example on your own before you watch me go through it. 
So we know that the area formula for a triangle is base times height divided by 2. They're asking us to determine the length of the height, which in this case I will highlight as green. That is our x. And we need to find which of these two sides of the triangle, the 4 or the 7, is actually the base. Well, this height um, comes perpendicular down to the base that is 4. So I'm going to be using 4 as my base. So let me find my pen. And they tell us in this case that the area is 10. So I'm going to plug in 10 for my A because that is my area. And then we know that 4 is my base and x is my height. So 4 times x and that all of that needs to be divided by 2. So one way you can solve this is put your 10 over 1 and you can cross multiply. So I'm going to have 4x times 1 which gives me 4x equals the other direction gives me 10 times 2 which is 20. So I have 4x equals 20. I can divide both sides by 4. I'm undoing the order of the operation of multiplication. I'm going to be dividing. So I get x equals 5. Now for our units, notice that they gave us centimeters squared. So we need to use centimeters as our unit it is going to be a linear unit because we are looking for the length of that green height. So our height is 5 centimeters. So we have completed this video. Hopefully now you are able to find the area of rectangles, squares, parallelograms, and triangles. The next step for you would be to complete the chapter 11 assignment number one homework which is found on Schoology in the Chapter 11 folder. This assignment is in Schoology and not in Delta Math. So please log into Schoology and find that assignment, assignment number one. Thank you for listening and have a great day. Stay safe. Over and out.